The Dr. Taz Show. The podcast, Dr. Taz. Superwoman Wellness. Here's Dr. Taz. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Superwoman Wellness, where you know I am determined to bring you back to your superpowered self. And how many times have you guys heard me say food is medicine? You're probably rolling your eyes right now, but I have a great guest on who's going to reinforce that message even more. Welcome to the show, Nika Pasquale. Let me tell you guys a little bit about her. She's a licensed acupuncturist, an herbalist, an author, an organic activist, and founder of Urban Remedy. She created Urban Remedy as a natural evolution of her passion for health and healing and living a lifestyle, wait for it, with the food as healing mantra. Of course, that's the one we all need. In her private practice over a decade, Nika combined acupuncture, Chinese and functional medicine with cutting edge nutrition and lifestyle modifications to heal, balance, and create optimal health. Welcome to the show, Nika. I could go on about your credentials, but I want to focus on what you're doing and all the great work you're doing. So glad to have you here. I hope that uh, you can educate us on why food as healing is so important. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Well, talk to, us, talk, yeah, talk to us a little bit about your story. And, you know, again, I'm an acupuncturist as well. So I, I understand the energetics of food, but everybody out there doesn't, you know, that's sort of yeah. like woohoo talk or way out there talk. So connect those dots to us. They know food is medicine. They've heard that before, but food is healing and food with energy help break that down for us a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the way that I got into starting Urban Remedy was really just by my own exploration in my practice. So I had a private practice for about 11 years and I started treating a lot of people with chronic inflammatory disorders like PCOS, prediabetes, um, things like that. And what I noticed is you know, I could help people with acupuncture and herbs, but when I had people start doing lifestyle modifications and really the people that were willing to change their diets Mm -hmm. saw the fastest results and actually could heal or reverse a lot of the issues that they were dealing with. And so what I did is I started taking people away on retreats for about three to four days. And I had people that literally would, were on like an eight to 10 pain scale, Mm -hmm. rheumatoid arthritis, um, pre-diabetes and literally after four days would be down to a three or their blood sugars would normalize. And it just blew my mind that if you, you know, incorporate some detoxification principles and really radically change your diet to a plant-based, really healing, healthy diet with healthy fats, that you can actually see results very, very quickly. And so that just really inspired me. And I love food and making things taste good. And so I started using the food is healing principles because every food has a taste and a temperature and organ and meridian that it's associated with. So you can use food just the way you would use a medicine or take an herbal formula. And so I started doing that with people and I loved making the food. It was so fun for me. And that's really how I started Urban Remedy. Just, you know, I think the main thing is people find that it's really difficult to understand how to make the food, Right. make the food. And so I just set out to make it easy for people to Mm -hmm eat healthy. And just because people will go, I'm eating like this. And then after like 30 days, like, I just can't deal with shopping and like doing the whole thing. And so, yeah, just to make it easy for people. And that's what most of our customers say now, you know, that buy stuff from Urban Remedy. It's so great. I have a place I can go. It's always dairy free. It's always gluten free. It's low inflammatory. There's no canola or vegetable oils. Yeah. And so it's like a food safe zone. So that was kind of like what I set out to do with Urban Remedy. Well, I think that's, uh, you know, so important and, and exactly what I hear in practice every day. Like, it's just too hard. How do I do this? How do I put yeah. this together? But think, thinking back to the early days of your practice, like what were the big food issues? What were the big food sort of, you know, faux pas that people were making that were getting them sick? Can you think through like some of those patterns. So anyone out here listening today might be able to latch on to that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I would say, and I've learned a lot over the years, but you know, I would say that some, one of the biggest ones is um, eating genetically modified foods and eating things like wheat, for example, we know gluten's not the best thing for you. It, it's just an inflammatory part right. of, you know, grain, glutinous grains, but wheat is also sprayed with glyphosate after it's picked. And so wheat is one of those things, unless you're eating it organic, where not only are you getting gluten, which is highly inflammatory, but a lot of people are ingesting glyphosate, which is a very toxic uh, food 
chemical that's sprayed on foods. And so when you combine eating an inflammatory diet with food that is sprayed heavily with chemicals, you're getting like double the toxic burden, right? So you're eating, you know, a hamburger that might be filled with um, hormones and chemicals with a bun that sprayed, you know, has glyphosate in it. And so you're just eating food that I always say, like, when you look at what you're eating, ask yourself, is this going to cleanse my body or is this going to mm-hmm. clog my body? And but so I was yeah. going to say, so like, I think people may, may know that, but where do we find this food? Like, is everything need to be organic? Is that a guarantee that it doesn't have glyphosate on it? Again, we do a lot of testing yeah. in the practice and we will see glyphosate come up in people's blood and urine and things like that. And we do think it's a it's a big piece of why they're getting sick or why things are happening or why their gut's declining, why there's yeah. inflammation. You know, is there a solution? To- well, yeah, I mean, the, the clearest solution, if you don't want those toxic chemicals in your food is to choose organic because certified organic is really the only place that you know that they are not spraying with glyphosate and using genetically modified seeds and the toxic pesticides. If you're choosing non-GMO certified, you know that you're eating food that is not grown with a genetically modified seed, but all of those things are still heavily sprayed Mm -hmm. with chemicals and pesticides. So if you want to eat the cleanest diet you can, you choose certified organic because that is the only certifying agency that is testing and making sure that those foods are not sprayed. Sometimes I, you know, crops might be contaminated mm-hmm. with a little bit of um, pesticides, but if you look at an uh, organic apple next to a, a conventional apple, it has like 47 times the amount of pesticides than an organic apple. So choosing organic really is the one thing that you can do to lower your toxic burden and not be exposed to something like glyphosate. And then I would say the second thing is, choosing the non-GMO verified that way at least you know you're not eating genetically modified food so that's super helpful and then you know what is there a good research showing because many people question the GMO thing is there research currently today you know kind of connecting GMO foods to disease you know because we don't have a great way of testing for that right like I can test for glyphosate but it's very hard to test the GMO piece you know how how can how what's the research saying about GMO foods currently Well, I would say I've done a lot of research myself on genetically modified foods. I've interviewed a lot of different people. Yeah, Um, It's one of those things where if you look at, and I hope this doesn't sound conspiracy theory, but if you look at um, who, like big ag and who's running our food supply system that is intricately related to the FDA, it's the big food companies, right? So the big food companies, and if you look at like Monsanto and Sergenta and those companies, they're the companies that are spraying the most... Um, and making the most money from all of that stuff being sprayed. They do a lot of their inside research and saying that genetically modified food is safe and whatever. But if you even look recently, this last two years, um, they've lost lawsuits that have gone to the Supreme Court showing that glyphosate causes cancer. So there's a couple, more than a couple, a handful of people that have gotten paid out um, from Monsanto for getting cancer from eating their genetically modified food and the glyphosate. Um, there's many books written on GMOs right. that are, are really great. Like Jeffrey Smith has written some really good books on genetically modified foods. Um, I think, you know, people can make their own choice. Mm-hmm. Like if people feel like it's something that they want to eat, then go ahead and eat it. But personally, I, I think one thing that's really important is like sometimes the genetically modified food is made in a way that you cannot wash off the pesticides. So there'll be a gene edited in corn, for example. So when a bug eats the corn, it explodes. Mm -hmm. And that's how it kills. That's the the mechanism of the pesticide killing the bugs that are trying to eat that plant, which makes it resistant, right? Right. Found that when we eat the plant, it actually pokes little holes in our gut and causes is one of the reasons that people have leaky gut syndrome. So there's a lot of research on both sides. So I would, I always tell people just do your own research, but make sure you look at both sides because it's one of those things where I think with most things, like you could look up a study and find 20 studies that are for something and 20 studies that are against them and they all look good. And so it's really just using your own intuition, but making sure you're doing the research. And and asking yourself, like, what really makes sense? 
Like, do I want to potentially eat something that could poke holes in my gut? That's, you know, that's actually the other part is, do I want to eat food that is killing our soil and denaturing our soil? Or do I want to eat organic food, which is helping our soil and making our soil more viable for a better future for our children and, and future crops, food crops to come? Yeah, that's such an important concept because what we're finding is the manufacturing practices have, are literally stripping our soil, our environment of the nutrients. Even when we're trying to eat healthy food, sometimes, you know, you're just starting behind the game because the soil has become so depleted in so many yeah. regions as well. So that's a, that's a huge issue too. You know, so it's, it's more recently that we've had to really dial into organic, non-GMO versus just going to the drugstore or the supermarket and getting whatever we want. You know, going back thousands of years to traditional Chinese medicine, what did they think about food? They weren't dealing, I don't think, with the chemical load that we're dealing with today. What were the principles of healthy eating and healing, you know, energy of healing and energy of foods way back then? Yeah, I mean, way back then, they were looking at food you know, we, there's a materia medica of herbs that we use yep. in Chinese medicine. And there's a materia medica of food, which is so cool. So like every food has, you know, if you have like too much heat in your body, for example, and you know this, mm -hmm. um, you know, and you went to a Chinese medicine doctor, they're going to have you eat foods that are cooling because that's going to balance your constitution. And so you really have to look at how you're feeling, you know, what, what organs might be a little weak or stronger and how you can use food to really stimulate your own innate healing response because our bodies want to heal. But when we're constantly eating food that's causing inflammation or you know, where our toxic burden is much higher, you know, now it's even more important to be eating those foods. But in Chinese medicine, food was considered a piece of the puzzle of health. It was like diet, lifestyle, you know, connection to community, exercise, and um, you know herbs and acupuncture and whatever you would need, but food was a very large component of keeping people healthy. And they would say, if your diet is strong, you know the chances of getting a disease are much less. And one of the root causes of illness is an improper diet. So, and I love study. I love Chinese medicine for that reason that they're able to connect the dots that way. You know, so, um, but how does that? How have you taken all of that and applied it to urban remedy and? what you're doing with Urban Remedy. Give us a sense of, of that. We understand how it came about with your experience in practice, but how does it sort of marry this idea of certified organic along with the Chinese medicine principles of the energy of food? Uh, give, us, give us some ideas yeah. about that. Um, well, every ingredient that I use, I look at the healing property of it. All the produce we use, all of our ingredients are certified organic. So you know that you're getting the cleanest um, that you can. I started out organic. Um, when I started Urban Remedy about 10 years ago. Um, but I'll, I'll do things like, um, you know, I have like a turmeric lemonade that's very low glycemic. And so we'll juice fresh turmeric and with lemon juice and, you know, we'll use a little bit of monk fruit to sweeten it. And so it's something that looks beautiful to the eye. It tastes really good and it's going to naturally lower inflammation um, and help people feel better. Or you know, the food bowls that I make are all made. I look at the ingredients as medicine and almost like a formula. So I'll make like, I'll use, if I'm doing a grain bowl, I'll use like organic quinoa and then like sweet organic roasted sweet potatoes and chickpeas and things um, that are filling and that really are nutrient dense and low glycemic. So my whole goal is to make food that tastes good and is really satisfying to eat, but leaves you really feeling good and food that actually nourishes your body. Because that's the best, right? When you eat something yeah. that you love and you're like, oh my God, this is so good. It tastes good. I'm satisfied. I love it. And then like, you feel really good. There's nothing better than that. Because a lot of times we'll eat food that might taste good in the moment, but after we're like, oh, our stomach hurts or we've bloated or we're so tired. So I try to create food that's going to energize you yeah. and empower you in your life to be as healthy as you can be. So with Urban Remedy, you know, so we're uh, kind of your goal is to keep to those principles of food is healing, getting the energetics of food in. How are you able though to accomplish that? Because given sort of the landscape of it's difficult to find healthy foods, it's difficult to source organic food. Tell us a little bit about the process. I think many people, including myself, we want to know like, how are you able to make this work 
versus so many of the other food delivery companies that are out there right now? Yeah, I mean, I, it's very difficult um, because we are committed to, you know, being certified organic. A lot of the other companies might make healthy food and they say, oh, we'll use organic where we can. But most of right. the time they're not using organic because they're saving a lot of money, which I right. completely understand. Um, but we are 100% committed that everything is organic. And so it's difficult because our margins are not as great as, you know, if we were just doing this to make money, we'd be like, oh, let's not do organic. We're just going right. to, you know, go the other way. So it is very difficult and challenging because we want to create a sustainable business um, and also, you know, be successful and not go out of business. So it's been a challenge, you know, over the last seven years, really figuring out how to do that. And it's still a challenge today. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that's why you might see one of our juices might be like 50 cents more than another juice because mm -hmm. of the quality, the organic and all of that. And we have a lot of practices in our business where, you know, the people that work in our uh, juicing facility, you know, have the same, you know, healthcare that we have in the office. So we have like equality for all of our employees, which is really important to us. Yeah. yeah. So we've created a business. Um, we're also um, a, a B corporation. Mm -hmm. And so not only are we interested in, you know, making this healthy food for people, but really um, creating a business model that really, you know, is the best model for our employees, for the earth, for, you know, the environment yeah. and doing good. So we do our best. I mean, there's definitely places we can improve, right. but that's really, that's really our goal is to really um, create a business model that is supportive to, you know, everything that's happening in the world. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about, you know, how long you guys have been in business and what your sort of sense is with the food delivery business as people like try to find answers to eating healthy, especially with the pandemic. I'm curious, yeah. you know, kind of what did that do uh, from a business standpoint, also from a food standpoint, did you have like an uptick in requests for something different? You know, just curious to see what people are choosing. Yeah. Um, well, we have an interesting business model because we're not just a food delivery business. That's actually the smallest part of our business. We, okay. We, in California, we have about 12 stores. We have 12 retail stores, um, Northern to Southern California. And then we're in a bunch of grocers. So we're in a bunch of Whole Foods. So we're um, all over the West Coast. We're all over the East Coast. We're in New York and Washington, DC. We're gonna be in Florida. We're in Oregon. Um, you could look on our website, urbanremedy.com. And we have these beautiful branded kiosks in Whole Foods and a bunch of other different markets. And so you can find our food there or we can ship, you could go to our website and then we will deliver food. But that is, like I said, our smallest gotcha. the small part of our business. Um, and so it's really interesting because it's different having those three um, models of yeah. our business because most people are just doing direct to consumer or retail or they're in the store. So we, so it's a little bit more complicated, um, but it gives our customers a easier way to find us. So sometimes people, you know, obviously since COVID started, we've de been doing a lot more delivery. Mm -hmm. COVID, our retail stores and wholesale was our biggest channel. Um, so we're, yeah, so we are delivering. We've pretty much tripled our delivery business, um, which is great because now people are really ordering food to be delivered to their house. Yeah. And especially yeah. with COVID, people are wanting healthier food because they're wanting to keep their immune system strong. So, yeah. I feel like that's the one blessing of COVID people, like the conversation around health and wellness, people yeah. have really gotten more dialed into and, and more curious about because it's been such a trying year for everyone. So what's yeah. next for Urban Remedy? I know that you have a whole host. You sent me so much yumminess over the weekend. So thank you for that. It was uh -huh, it's yeah. just, it's so filling. It's like, you're not eating a lot of food, but it's incredibly satisfying yeah. and filling. So I think that's, that's a true plus of the whole thing, but tell us what's next for Urban Remedy. What are you, what are you hoping for from a business sense? What's next in the food world? I've been personally fascinated with the food world, even to the point of wanting to get more into, into soil and understanding what's happening, yeah. farming and all that other stuff. Give us a, a sense of what's happening out there as, as all of us are planning our meals on a day-to-day -day yeah. basis and trying to feed our families. Give us a, a sense of that. Yeah. I mean, I think it's um, an interesting time because everything has pivoted. Nobody expected COVID to happen. Right. I mean, all food businesses are, are kind of figuring out like what's next, right? Because every, all the restaurants went from people coming into the restaurant to either going out of business or having to have a pickup or delivery service. 
So it'll be interesting to see what happens over the next year as hopefully COVID dies down and to see will people start going back to restaurants or are people gonna still do the delivery? Um, but I would say like as a consumer, if you are somebody that, you know, wants to support the environment and wants to support your body, you know, even when you're going to the grocery store or whatever, it's really choosing organic, which mm -hmm. is so important because you vote with your dollar or choosing, you know, non hormone, you know, pasteurized meats if you eat meat or organic milk and butter if you want to change the dairy industry, because every time you buy something, you're voting with your dollar. So if you look at you know, General Mills, or you look at these big food companies, a lot of them are creating organic um, food products now because that's what the customers are asking for. So every time you buy something, you're voting with your dollar. So I always tell people that's probably the one most important thing you could do. It might be a little more expensive, but it's the same thing as like recycling or doing something that you feel is good for the earth because it's undebatable that our soil is really being depleted and it is one of our most important natural resources. And it is directly related to our gut microbiome. And so for our own health and well-being, we need to make sure and ensure that the soil is healthy for our own health. And if you look at companies like General Mills, they're actually going into the farmland and paying for conventional farmers to turn their farmland into organic farmland. Interesting, so, wow. Yeah. So because a lot of the big companies need to ensure that they can get enough organic grains if they're going to create a new product and right. so they're helping uh that to happen and they're, they're not to say you know they're not not everything they do is organic but these bigger companies are helping to create uh change the farmland based on what you all are doing which is hopefully buying organic and that's what makes a huge difference yeah i think that's so important and for anyone out there listening who's trying to figure out the food thing i hear that from so many of you all the time it's like I don't know how to shop. I don't know where to shop. I don't know what to get. And, you know, there's the whole issue with cross contamination too, where people get super confused by that. Like, you know, am I still getting exposed to glyphosate because there's cross contamination amongst our farms? You know, I, I always tell folks, you have to start somewhere, you know, and I think sometimes if we get too in the weeds of, you know, well, this is happening and that's happening, then almost like too much information, too much knowledge. Uh, my husband always says it, analysis yeah. is paralysis. You don't move forward with totally. anything. So I think for anybody out there listening, if you're trying to figure out the pieces of your health puzzle, you know, one of the foundational principles of Chinese medicine is to start with food as medicine and food, yeah. you know, food is as your healing tool. And I forgot, quite honestly, that there's the Materia Medica of food. I forgot that they have that whole published yeah. you know, sort of dictionary of what to take when. And really think about putting energy there, starting with buying organic. Nika, is there one or two other things you would tell them if they're sort of like, okay, what do I learn from this lesson? Buy organic. I mean, I'm on the same page as you. I think like every, keep it really simple. Like yeah. you don't need to get totally into the weeds. So again, I would just say, always ask yourself, is this food going to clog me? Is it going to cleanse me? Clogging food is highly processed foods that comes in a package that has very low water content. Foods that are going to cleanse and really nourish your body are foods that are higher water content. It's all fruits, all vegetables, root vegetables, grains that you cook with water. So all of those foods are going to tend to nourish your body and be better for your health. I mean, that's just on a simple level. There's no doubt, like if you're questioning organic versus non-organic, it's undebatable that organic food has much lower pesticide, much lower content of any sort of toxins or pesticides. So I wouldn't even bother like getting into the weeds with that. That's just like, just accept yeah. that for what it is and just try to buy organic when you can. Um, if you can't just make sure you wash things as, as well as you can, even though you can't wash glyphosate off, it doesn't wash off. But um, so I, for me, I would say, you know, drinking clean water, eating, choosing an organic diet, diet and eating, you know, as much of a plant-based diet as you can with little bits. I mean, enjoy your life and have a dessert and, you know, right. And, right. and everything. But if you could eat 80% of a plant-based diet that's organic, then you're going to be doing your body and, you know, the earth good and really supporting yourself and uh, the environment. So I think that it's that's great. Cool. Advice. Yeah. Great advice. Way to simplify it down. I could talk forever about this, this whole issue and where we go from here. But if anyone is listening and wants to learn more about you or Urban Remedy, uh, what's the best way for them to get into get in touch with you? 
Um, we, are, we have a website, it's urbanremedy.com and you could go there and it tells where we have our stores or you could look at all of the items that we offer. We do a lot of different seasonal items. We do all the day parts. So we do breakfast, lunch, and dinner and juices and shakes and snacks and desserts and everything is gluten-free and dairy-free and, and super healthy. Um, and then we are all over um, the United States in different Whole Foods and we do ship. So um, yeah, urbanremedy.com. And again, I'm Nika Pasquale and I have a blog on there with lots of health information and a podcast as well. And so all of that's on the Urban Remedy site though. Well, fantastic. I enjoyed the food so much. It's delicious. Oh, thank you. It's filling, it's satisfying. And that whole principle of buying organic and eating consciously, that's something that we all have to continue to work on. Thank you, Nika, for taking thank time out to so join much. us today. I appreciate it. And for everybody else watching this episode of Superwoman Wellness, remember, you can rate and review it and share it with your friends. I will see you guys next time.